join you tonight with breaking news. This has been a long night for police officers and store owners across central Illinois as we continue our coverage on this aftermath of many protests in the area. WCIA 3's Andy Olson is live in Danville. Andy, what have you found? Well, Jen, right now things are pretty quiet in Danville. We've had a car here for a while and we've been going up and down. And well, first of all, we've seen a big police presence so far. I'm at the Village Mall. As you can see behind me, there's a couple of squad cars sitting out in front of one of the stores. And they, we've seen that at a couple of different stores around Danville. But so far, we haven't seen any gatherings yet here at the Village Mall. It's just the police cars and we haven't seen any signs of forced entry or broken windows or anything like that at the stores. Up north Vermillion, there have been a couple of squad cars going back and forth with their lights on and of course at the Walmart in Menards up on North Vermilion. They also had cops guarding the exits and entrances to those buildings. But again, no gathering so far. We also went through downtown Danville and then didn't find any signs of anything broken. We also didn't find any squad cars there or we didn't find uh, any gatherings there as well. So right now things are quieted down in Danville. Um, a big police presence. They're keeping their uh, squad cars out and sitting in front of these retail buildings. But right now no large gatherings that we found um, and it seems to be pretty quiet on this front so far. In Danville, Andy Olson, WCIA3, your local news leader. All right, thank you, Andy. And one of the things that you can see on our website, by the way, are the peaceful protests that were happening in Danville earlier today. Mark? Uh, yeah, there were several demonstrations, and we heard from the mayor as well. But police have also posted up in the streets of Champaign to monitor the area as the curfew is now in place in Champaign. WCIA3's Jennifer Jensen is live at Prospect and Marketplace there with a look at what's been going on. Uh, Jennifer, any idea? What the, what's the sense you're getting there? We see police presence behind you. Mark, as we've told everyone throughout the day, here on Prospect Avenue at a lot of the stores is where many of those acts of vandalism and looting happen throughout the day. But right now, into, night, into the night, this is what we are looking at. Police have set up squad cars along the main intersections to make sure people comply with the curfew that has been set in place in Champaign. That was set from 8.30 tonight until 6 o'clock in the morning tomorrow on Monday. Now, local and state police have been parked in the streets like Lights flashing since this curfew started and will remain here until that curfew is lifted. Again, as a reminder in Champaign, that is at 6 a.m. This upcoming Monday morning, and they are letting cars through. I want to let everybody know they are letting cars through to get where they need to go. Some cars are being stopped to ask for verification of address to make sure they're getting to the right place. So they are letting cars with passengers through where they need to go, but everyone is being asked to stay at home and to stay safe and that is why police have been posted up in the streets they're here on prospect avenue they're also posted up near marketplace mall on neal street as well we drove around a little bit earlier in the night just to make sure we had a handle on where police were and these seem to be the main areas at the main intersections to make sure people get to their homes safe tonight for now, live in Champaign, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Yeah, Jennifer, one last question. Uh, we saw you earlier in our 10 o'clock newscast uh, as vandalism happened right there during your live shot. Can you walk us back through those moments? Uh, we, we know you uh, got out of there safely, of course, but what did you see? What happened there? What was that scene like as the protest sort of uh, devolved into vandalism? Sure, Mark, that was a very heavy moment. Um, it started out as peaceful protest. That is in a different location where we were before for our 10 o'clock newscast. We were still in Champaign, but we were on the other side of town in Campus Town on Green Street. What started out for hours as very peaceful protests um, escalated into vandalism and looting at a store on Green Street in Campus Town. Um, that continued a little bit after we had left because we wanted to get away from some of that violence. But very heavy moments here tonight. We all have been through a lot. So I just want to encourage everybody um, while we talk about this curfew, police are here making sure people get home safely and stay safe throughout the main remainder of the night and into the morning. Sure, we just want to say to you and everyone else that has been out there tonight, we thank you for your coverage of everything that has been going on and please continue to stay safe. Thank you. Now, on the phone, we have WCIA3's chief meteorologist, Kevin Lighty. He has been driving around all night. Kevin, what can you tell us? 
Well, I've been traveling around the Champaign-Urbana area from north to south and east and west throughout this evening. Um, uh, my journey started earlier this evening when protests were occurring along the Prospect Avenue area near Marketplace Mall, which, of course, as, uh, as Jennifer Jensen mentioned, is uh, you know pretty much on lockdown down there right now. But as people have left that area, they have found other places. Uh, and I have been to numerous break-ins and where people have looted, including the AT&T store on South Neal Street, the Sprint store at Philo in Florida in Urbana, where literally uh, you could see, still see within the store the two very large rocks that they threw through the window as I arrived. The owner of the Sprint store was there, and he was boarding things up. And unfortunately, this was not the first time he had to deal with this today. He also owns the same Sprint store on Prospect Avenue as well. So both of his stores are in Champaign and then Urbana – uh, both were looted uh, today, and uh, he got the call here just about a half an hour ago to go in. Um, I've been on campus as well, um, where right, I mean, literally right by some very well-known places like the Red Lion, um, across from that where there are other cell phone stores, there is a, a fix-it I, a phone repair store where it was, it was broken into, and I was literally driving along First Street, uh, right there on campus when I actually saw uh, a couple of individuals trying to be very nonchalant about it, walking by um, a Piccadilly Liquors and were uh, taking things from there as well. So what is different about, you know, what, what's been going on here tonight is it seems like it's smaller pockets of people. I know so many of you have seen the large groups in some of the larger cities and I'm not seeing that. These seem to be smaller groups of people, and, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's kind of eerie out here tonight because while many people are at home and are abiding by that curfew, you, you kind of just know that lurking, you know, somewhere that there might, you know, be something going on. And as you just listen, as we've been listening to uh, the scanner tonight, you just do about another business and another business and another business. And the one that I actually did come across was the one at uh, the Dollar General at Duncan and Bradley, where they actually had some individuals in custody. They were uh, the front had been broken out, uh, but they had them sitting on the ground. The officer was there, and so. But a lot of times, it seems like that um, you know a lot of people are, are getting away uh, with this, as police are definitely stretched to the max here they're all out i mean i see i see police cars everywhere and they're doing their best to to protect the businesses here but it seems like liquor stores and cell phone stores seem to be high target areas and that's kind of what i've been seeing out here tonight and just bouncing around and i did go check out that the, the sawgrass area we had some people uh that were mentioning that you know possibly people breaking into homes things like that and I think we have found that for that not to be true. Um, but I went to the Sawgrass area there on the west side of town and, and didn't see anything. It was as quiet as could be. But uh, definitely um, been uh, been a rough night here in uh, Champaign and Urbana. And, uh, again, from north, south, to east, and west, it seems like a lot of places have been impacted. And, Kevin, we, ha we have video now showing the Dollar General with that scene there, police appearing to take people in custody. Uh, hang on the line with us. I want to ask you a follow-up question. You mentioned that moment there. The Champaign Police Department uh, did want to... Uh, Crack down, cr clamp down on some rumors they saw spreading on social media uh, the, from the police department tonight. They said, quote, we have not seen anything specifically uh, involving any looting and protesters and neighborhoods. They see no evidence connecting these two items. People at home uh, should expect that they are safe where they're at. They said we have gotten no calls for home break-ins. Again, the Champaign Police Department trying to uh, put those rumors to rest. Uh, but, Kevin, I saw that uh, you had spoken to, and I think you mentioned that you spoke to the store owner of the Sprint location there. Can you give us some sense of what he's feeling tonight, what, what he was saying? I, I, a lot of store owners are uh, very anxious, very nervous as they try to protect their property. Uh, many cases, these, this is their livelihood. Uh, what, what, was, what was going through his mind in your conversation with him in those first moments after uh, you, you arrived on scene there? Sure. He, he seemed tired. And what I mean by that is, you know, he said, you know, I've been dealing with my store on the north side 
uptown, the Sprint store there. I just got home. You know, I've been tense all day. Just got home, just got into bed, and then got the call from the police department that the alarm was going off again. And he goes, I'm just, he goes, I'm just tired. And, you know, he's like, I, but there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm just here doing what I can to, to board it up. And he just seemed helpless, to be honest with you, as I think many of the business owners are uh, in this situation. All right, Kevin, thank you for recapping uh, some of that damage there for us. And, of course, a lot of cleanup uh, will be underway tomorrow. I have no doubt the community will be out in full force uh, to assist in, in those efforts. Kevin, thanks for recapping that. And we do have peaceful demonstrations that happen outside of the state capitol. But we did also have reports of an altercation after someone spray painted a police building. There was no further damage or vandalism. We do have video from there earlier. Yeah, our reporter Cole Hankey was on the scene. They were seeing they're lighting candles uh, at the vigil. There was uh, Black Lives Matter activists uh, and several people marching. But what you're seeing here is Springfield police. Uh, well, you were seeing a moment ago, uh, they saw someone uh, tag or spray paint the police building and police had a visual on who they suspected might have been there so there was uh, some tense moments there but it, it seemed to dissipate rather quickly um, but this is again outside City Hall in Springfield after uh, thousands of cars earlier in the day showed up for a processional and drove through town um, that organization uh, kept most people in their cars and kept people safe you see the demonstration here though went well after. Uh, so the city of Springfield had what you might consider a soft curfew, no hard official curfew, but they did uh, tell people to, uh, if they can, go home, stay home, stay away from the crowds after dark. Uh, but we saw uh, the Springfield police chief say that for the most part, the city of Springfield uh, stayed largely safe. You didn't see a lot of the same shattered glass uh, in the city of Springfield at last report, uh, though there is a significant police presence there and there were still people uh, lingering. Uh, beyond that time. And we also want to give you a look now. We are going to take a live picture from Chicago area. Governor Pritzker had signed a disaster proclamation for Cook County, deployed 375 military police officers from the Illinois National Guard to Chicago Sunday after the death of George Floyd has sparked protests and unrest there in the city. This is a live look over there. Many of the suburbs as well in the Chicago area are also on lockdown and curfew right now. Now, Mark was actually in Chicago yesterday as some of these protests escalated into violence and looting. Mark, can you talk a little bit about um, what you saw there, what we've been following again with uh, protests there today? Yeah, it, it was very interesting to see. There were several different groups of protesters that would start out at different parts of the city, and when those different groups would collect into one larger group, that's when police had to start to strategically engage the group, try and disperse them, and then sometimes, in many cases, even retreat. Uh, some of you may have seen some of the uh, viral video on social media of a Chicago police officer caught up in the chaos and dragged through the streets for a moment. Uh, there were many, many uh, arrests in the city of Chicago last night. Tonight we see some of that violence scattering to the suburbs and around, of course, to central Illinois as well. Uh, this is that live look uh, that we're getting uh, from uh, our affiliates in Chicago showing uh, even now this crowded scene. There is a curfew in effect in Chicago uh, and in many of the surrounding city suburbs as well. So people out right now are risking uh, arrest. Uh, they, they can be uh, arrested in the city of Chicago for being out this late and uh, sent home. Uh, we, we know that much, um, but it is certainly, uh, this has put, uh, Jen has put a lot of police uh, and a lot of people who own this property uh, in, uh, they're, they're working long hours, they're working overtime, they're being stretched in uh, in some tense altercations as this ebbs and flows. Right now, that scene looks rather calm. Right, and we do know right now malls across the region there have closed early amidst the fears of looting. There were some problems reported at the Orland Square Mall in Orland Park as well as River Oaks Shopping Center in south suburban Calumet City. Now, according to the North Riverside Police, as our affiliates have been reporting there, officers also responded to North Riverside Park Mall after a group of individuals there smashed out windows and began looting around 2 p.m. this afternoon. Now, while the looting was going on at the mall, which was closed at the time there, uh, we also learned that an individual was shot in a parking lot outside of a, near Olive, a nearby Olive Garden. So, again, that is something we are continuing to follow in Chicago. But we want to come back to central Illinois. Uh, Mark, let's talk about what we're seeing now. Yeah, this was recorded a few moments ago. If you're just joining us hey, everyone, during breaking news. 
uh, you're hearing our news partners with the Herald and Review showing us this footage. Crews are battling this massive fire. This is Indicator, uh, the Starship Billiards and Enterprise Grill. It's a pool hall. Indicator, you see the fire trucks, uh, firefighters on scene there. Uh, still no word yet how it started. Uh, a camera crew, uh, WCIA news crew, is headed to that scene. Of course, uh, we've been to Danville tonight. We've been to Springfield tonight uh, in Champaign tonight, uh, stretched thin, trying to cover all the many different things that are uh, seemingly unfolding uh, in rapid sequence. But again, here, this is the scene indicator where any number of uh, fire trucks are working to put out what appears to be the, 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 that must, most of the smoke there uh, is remaining. It doesn't seem like there is an, a, a, they're working to, to reduce the risk of, of any active fire. The camera, of course, uh, staying on the safe perimeter. But this is, uh, again, one of many harrowing images from a night of protests that uh, while it, many organizers started out uh, promising a peaceful protest, we saw them devolve in many cases into violence, looting, and in some cases perhaps uh, an investigation of, of arson may be underway. And you know, the big question now is what comes into ne what comes next? We know the curfews will be lifted tomorrow morning. And one of the things that we have to look at is COVID-19 testing. The Illinois Department of Public Health announced that all COVID-19 community-based testing sites will be closed tomorrow. That includes Champaign site at the Marketplace Mall. That was the site of looting today. A total of 10 different places in Illinois have been closed, those testing sites. And this does come after Governor Pritzker announced today that people at demonstrations should be tested for COVID-19. And Mark, I know you were listening to Governor Pritzker's response earlier. I know you also have been following what lawmakers have been saying. Yeah, a lot of our elected officials, leaders are trying to make sense of some of uh, this mayhem as it happens. Of course, uh, elected officials across the state have condemned the acts of looting, the acts of violence as they uh, muddle the message, the mix, the message of the protesters who started out. Uh, one of those elected officials was House Democrat Cam Buckner, uh, uh, an African-American state representative from Chicago's South Side, uh, who uh, shared his story from earlier this month. He said he was wearing a mask to walk into a store, and when, when he walked out, someone confronted him, asking him if he was wearing a mask to cause trouble. Uh, later, he said this about that moment. He said, quote, COVID will not break us. It will only reveal to us what is already broken. There's a lot to be fixed. And uh, as store owners and employees and uh, businesses wake up on Monday morning, they're going to find that there is a lot more uh, in physical property left to be fixed. And we do know from Chief Cobb's announcement earlier, along with Mayor Finan, that uh, they are working with business owners to respond to all of the looting and the vandalism that we have seen. Now, as for what happens with businesses tomorrow, again, that curfew in Champaign as well as Urbana, which was in response to Champaign, will last until 6 a.m. And after that, it is up to the business owners uh, to decide what to do. And uh, we are continuing to follow breaking news throughout central Illinois. And again, these are pictures that we are looking at of some of the aftermath of what has been going on throughout the afternoon. Things started in Champaign around three o'clock at the Old Navy. Yeah, and Jen, much of this damage really, of course, it, it, it's, it, it's obvious to many people viewing this, uh, but it just only adds insult to injury for these business owners who had been shuttered. Uh, without access to customers for much of three months during these coronavirus closures. And uh, many of the law enforcement watching this had speculated perhaps many of the people, the protesters who had been stuck at home, uh, frustrated themselves at, and maybe anxious with the public health crisis that faced us. Uh, there, there, there's wonder about how much that may have also added to uh, the anger uh, that stemmed from what we saw Monday in, in Minnesota where George Floyd was uh, killed at the hands of a police officer. And we did have one of our crews just confirm that Paxton City Shed is on fire. That is behind the police department. We know that crews are out there now. We are not sure yet what started it. We don't know if anyone is hurt yet, but we are working to follow up on that and to find out what's going on. Is this a look at the video there? We this have a video is, on screen. This is, you're seeing this now, uh, the first time we're seeing these images here from Paxton. And that information comes from the county EMA director. Now, again, we are going back to video from earlier this afternoon at a point where tensions were starting to boil over. You do see a lot of protesters here. That is outside the Macy's at the Champaign Marketplace Mall. You see some of them very close to the different officers. You see a lot of passion out there 
Also, as we've been talking about masks, you see some of them wearing masks, other people have not, but Governor Pritzker is urging anyone that has been at demonstrations this weekend to get tested for COVID-19. Yeah, and that's the other thing. In, in different parts of the state, you see, I mean, most of the people in these videos are not wearing masks. Many people in the demonstrations earlier were, but as people come in closer contact, there is that concern from public health officials that uh, the risk of transmission could be even higher. Um, so that is going to be something that we start to measure in the uh, days and perhaps weeks to follow. And this video that we are looking at, this is from Champaign earlier. Um, as our crews were out there around 3 o'clock, that is the target where uh, gas was dispensed to try and break up some of the crowds. Our own reporters who were out on the scene said that they caught some of that tear gas while they were out there. And there are also officers outside that Vinny's from earlier this afternoon, uh, the scene of looting. We had uh, reports of different closures all along Prospect Avenue long before that curfew went into effect there. You can see the gas in that video. That was from earlier. We were live as that was happening. Yeah, and you're seeing uh, the number of people that came out. Of course, as police presence grew, protesters dispersed and left and scattered. Um, but many people watching, uh, wondering, anxious what tomorrow uh, will hold uh, as they return to work. Business owners uh, that we saw, there was, a, there was a jewelry store that had boarded up its windows in Champaign as well, uh, trying to protect whatever they have. But again, this is uh, some of the scenes that we've seen across central Illinois uh, on this day of unrest. And we will continue to bring you the latest updates. If you are watching, you can go to WCIA.com to our social media as well. And then in the morning, uh, now in just about four and a half hours, we will have coverage as our morning team picks up a look at the aftermath of all of this. If you're still with us, stay well, be safe, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.